Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Master's House. I am Pastor Jim. This is Katie, my wife, and we are Pastor Jim and Katie Langlois from the Master's House in Henrico, Virginia. We're right at the corner of Parham and Staples Mill, just a little bit north of Richmond, Virginia. And for those that are watching outside of... Did I do something funny? No, Good. no, she, no. You've no. you know, got to watch your faces because she's very <laughs> expressive. Sorry. And so, uh, but... We want to welcome everybody online, whether you're from the area or from far away. We welcome you, and we pray that you get blessed today in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Our service starts at 11 o'clock. We have worship. We'd love for you to join us right here in the building, if you can, uh, and join us for worship. And then we go, are you doing okay? Just got I'm good. I got a smile, smile on, on my face. face. It's really great. It's really great. <laughs> it's but on. I just think like she's up to something. Yep. But, uh, there you go. Yep, you I'm got on. it? Mine's yep. on, too. Sorry. I got it. Yeah, it's working. So uh, we hope that you can join us here live. And we are here. Everybody, glad to have those here. We're all together. And then uh, we also thank that uh, these videos go on our archive and people can watch them at any time. And if that's the case, we, we're praying for you too in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen? Amen. And so uh, we've been, we started a series. This is part three mm -hmm. of the, um, uh, what I'm calling the Apostles in the Book of Acts. Now, the title of the book of Acts is called The Acts of the Apostles, but I changed it to uh, The Apostles in the Book of Acts, and I'm trying to see if we can kind of look at the book of Acts, maybe from their view, or when they were going through this, what it was like for them. And so, um, let's just go through, I have a picture of the apostles, we'll look at this each week that I put together. Uh, we have Peter and Andrew at the top there, if you can see that, and they were brothers, and then we have James and John, also brothers, and they, are, they were called the Sons of Thunder. Mm -hmm. uh, they must have been like, uh, yeah. you know, a couple of those uh, brothers that you see at school that when you get them on the bus, you can tell, those are like the Sons of Thunder, I can tell. I've got, I've got a couple of them, I do. And, uh, and, but you'll notice the star on Peter and the star on James and John, and that means that they were part of what a lot of theologians call the inner uh, inner circle of Jesus Christ and he took them aside several times and spoke to them individually and ministered to them and of course then we have Philip and Bartholomew and Thomas and Matthew James the less mm -hmm. some people think that the other James the, the brother of John was the less uh, uh, and vice versa but most theologians think probably James was the less and um, uh, in stature and then in stature and then James of the James and John uh, was what they call uh, James the Great uh, or Greater, but whatever, uh, I don't think that Jesus preferred one over the other, no, if that makes didn't. sense. It's just names they had. Then we have Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and uh, Matthias who replaced Judas. And so they were what we would call the 12 apostles of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Yeah. There were some others, we're going to look at another one today, that, that are in the book of, uh, book of, uh, of Acts, but they're not the 12, uh, one of the 12 apostles of Christ. Amen? Okay. And so last week we looked at uh, Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 6 in the New Living Translation, and we talked about this. It says, but Peter said, say this after me, I don't have any silver. I don't have any silver. Or gold for you. Or gold for you. But I'll give you. But I'll give you. What I have. What I have. In the name of Jesus Christ of Na uh, the Nazarene. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene. Get up and walk. Get up and walk. <laughs> yeah, so, so uh, that was something we studied last week. I'm not going to go into it, but we really were looking through the eyes of Peter and John when they said those words and what took place, and it's very powerful. And the, the thing that we taught last week was we must know what we have mm -hmm. in order to walk in the empowerment that was given us when we were filled with the Spirit. You'll know, remember in Acts chapter 2, they were empowered, and then we find out here, it was the first act that Peter and John did. They went out and said, silver and gold have we none, or I don't have any really silver and gold for you. However, what I have, I'll give you. And so they must have known what they had. And if we're going to go out into the world and bring the empowerment of Christ to people, we got to know what we have in order to say, uh, but I have, uh, I'll give you what I have. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so listen to the less, uh, message uh, last oh. week. That'll bless you. Go and, ahead. And you did that this week. You oh. used this very verse this week. W what happened? You <laughs> so our neighbor oh, has yeah. been having major, like, um, he had major surgery on this his shoulder. shoulder. Major surgery. Yeah, and on his he rotator cuff. Tore and, up the whole thing. But then in physical therapy, um, they tore it again. So, oh. yeah. Oh. 
So he's been in a lot of pain. I don't know. <laughs> and so he's been in a lot of pain. And um, so we were just talking and asking him about how his shoulder is doing. And we stuff were like out that. for a walk. Yeah. He and comes by in his car and he rolls down his window and he says, "Hey, how are you guys doing?" So go ahead. And then he answered our question about the shoulder or whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, so he goes, "Silver and gold have I none, <laughs> but what I have I give to you." And well, so. And so he goes, do you mind if I, I lay hands on you and pray for you? And he goes, well, I haven't had that in a long time. He says, laying on hands, I haven't had that in a long time. So I went, okay, he's familiar with this. Yes. And so we did. We prayed and we believed with him. And um, it was just such a, a cool experience, you know, to have with your neighbor, you know, right across the street. Hey, sir. And, you know, um, and so we, we stand in faith. Yeah. And he's healed. Yeah. Father, we lift up Ron right now yep. in Jesus' name. You, and back on that prayer that we laid Thank hands you, on him and pray for him, we call his shoulder healed and delivered in Jesus' name. And so there was an opportunity, and uh, but, you know, you can't do that if you don't believe you have it. Right. So I believe I had it, I, I, and I, I told him, I said, I know that you'd like some silver and gold, but I really don't have any for you. <laughs> However, <laughs> you know. And what was interesting is when we read the New Test, uh, New Living Translation, it just said that they, you know, uh, let me go back to it. It just says, uh, I don't have any silver or gold for you. That's an interesting way to put it. Yeah. He doesn't mean he didn't have any. Right. It just didn't mean he it's might have had extra <laughs> at that point. Uh, and so, but I ha- uh, I'll give you what I have. And he said to get up and walk. Great story. Go, uh, go back and listen to that message. It'll really bless you. But I believe we know what we have. Yes. Amen. And that came in the second chapter of Acts with the infilling of the Spirit. And we are all baptized in the Spirit. Therefore, we're not just saved, but we're also filled with the empowerment to go forth and declare and, and walk in the kingdom of God. What a better thing to give than healing and deliverance and, and prayer uh, and salvation. So, uh, amen? Oh, yeah, amen. That's great. So go back to last week's and leave, uh, uh, re, uh, listen to that message. Amen. Now, let's go to uh, Acts chapter 4, verse 32. We're going to read through uh, 37. Uh, the pericope, or subtitle in this, uh, above the New Living Translation, uh, was called, The Believers Share Their Possessions. We're pretty much familiar with this story, but it's quite amazing what happened um and this is of course right after peter and john were in the temple you know all this is that close and the empowerment is happening to the apostles and all this all the saints and it says here acts 4 32 through 37 very interesting what are the first three words can you put it up there can you see what it yeah. says it says all the believers everybody say all the believers all the now believers. it's interesting it didn't say just the apostles uh, it, didn't, it, it said all the believers were united in heart and mind. Now, that's a miracle. That is. That is a, outright a miracle right there. But remember, this is coming out of that empowerment that God uh, laid upon them. And uh, it says uh, they were united in heart and mind, and they felt. It didn't say that the Lord instructed them. It says they felt what they owned was not their own, so they shared everything they had. Mm-hmm. Now that's that's what I would call amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> a heart of the the New Testament church here that's beginning, and um, they shared everything they had. And it tells us it, it goes on, uh, and then verse thirty three is a little side note. It says the apostles testified powerfully to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and God's great blessing was upon them all. And this is that's what they're doing. But all of a sudden. It says, there were no needy people among them because those who owned land or houses would sell them and bring the money to the apostles to give to those in need. Mm -hmm. I've never heard of somebody selling land or selling a house to take that money to bring to finance the kingdom. But that's what was happening here. It's about money. Listen, this is all about money here. They brought the money to the apostles. To give to those in need. Now, it gives us a for instance. Verse 36. Why don't you read 36 and 37? Okay. For instance, there was Joseph, the one the apostles nicknamed Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He was from the tribe of Levi and came from the island of Cyprus. 
He sold a field he owned and brought the money to the apostles. Now, don't forget, it says all the believers. It doesn't mean that they all sold a house or all sold, uh, 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 sold a, a plot of land. It just was, they all did something to finance the kingdom. Amen. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. And so they brought it before the apostles and the apostles distributed it. Just, isn't that amazing? I, I look at this, I go, wow, wow. And so then all of a sudden it says, for instance, this guy Barnabas, uh, who, who he, he was this, they called him uh, the son of encouragement. In other words, he must have been a really encouraging person. You Sounds can like do it. Kind of you can do it. <laughs> we can do this. Yes, mm -hmm. Jesus is more than enough. I'm sure that's the kind of person he was. And then all of a sudden, he has a piece of land. He sells it, brings back the money, and lays it at the apostles' feet. And they get it. They distribute it, and it blesses all. That's just an amazing story. We've not seen that around here, but it wasn't an instruction from the Lord. It was something that happened at a time, but it was joyful giving. Everybody say joyful, joyful, joyful giving. giving. And it said all of them were that way. And so <clears throat> then we go to Acts chapter 5, and we find a very interesting story we're very familiar with. That's the story of Ananias and Sapphira. So why don't you start that in Acts 5, 1 through 11. But there was a certain man named Ananias. And you're laughing again. Yes, it's fine. I'm cool. Okay. All right. Um, but there was a certain man named Ananias who, with his wife, Sapphira, sold some property. He brought part of the money to the apostles, claiming it was the full amount. With his wife's consent, he kept the rest. Okay. Let me tell you why he lied. Uh, the question we could ask is, why do we think that uh, Ananias and Sapphira lied? Well, I'm going to give you some ideas. They lied for pride. They lied to look good. They lied so others would hold them in high regard. They lied so that they would appear to be big givers. Their lie may have been just to compete with Barnabas, who was held in high esteem by everyone. But they put on a false front. Nowhere did it say they had to give it all. They just lied and said they gave it all, but didn't. Isn't that interesting? So start in verse 3. So they weren't really unified in heart, were they? <laughs> no, they were not. No. Um, then Peter said, Ananias, why have you let Satan fill your heart? You lied to the Holy Spirit, and you kept some of the money for yourself. The property was yours to sell or not sell, as you wished. And after selling it, the money was also yours to give away. How could you do a thing like this? You weren't lying to us, but to God. As soon as Ananias heard these words, he fell to the floor and died. Everyone who heard about it was terrified. Then some young men got up, wrapped him in a sheet, and took him out and buried him. About three hours later, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. Peter asked her, was this the price you and your husband received for your land? Yes, she replied. That was the price. You lie. And Peter said, how could the two of you even think of conspiring to test the spirit of the Lord like this? The young men who buried your husband are just outside the door, and they will carry you out too. Instantly, she fell to the floor and died. When the young men came in and saw that she was dead, they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. And the last verse? Great fear gripped the entire church and everyone else who heard what had happened. Very interesting, isn't it? isn't it? Um, let me read a commentary about this story to you. It's out of the King James Version Bible. It says, characteristic of a, uh, of a praying church is its lack of selfishness. Each member of this Jerusalem church was interested in the welfare of each other, each other member. The expression of one heart and of one soul shows the remarkable unanimity of this spirit-filled community. Richer members of the church made provision for those who were poor. No one was in want or hunger. Those who had houses or land sold them in order to see the welfare of others. Money was brought and laid at the apostles' feet, and distribu distribution was made to everyone according as he had need. No one made windfall profits no one was impoverished. I just find that amazing. Hmm. Now, 
Um, what we find here is, I think I have another note that I'm going to read in a little bit. Um, but he, yeah, I'll, I'll just explain this as we go. Uh, what, do you have something? Well, you, this part? Yeah, we, we could say that. Um, uh, this was not an instruction from God either. Amen? This was just what they decided to do. Let's look at it again. Acts 4.32, all the believers, how many? Aww. They were united in mind, heart and mind, and they felt that what they owned was not their own, so they shared everything they had. They realized that everything they had didn't really belong to them in the first place. And, and then verses 34 through 35 will review, there were no needy people among them because those who owned land or houses would sell them and bring the money to the apostles to give to those in need. Now, we could, uh, let me come back to that in a minute. Paul, I would call this a revival of giving. How about you? It, it, it's some move of the Spirit um, that these people decided to bring a lot of money. Uh, and what they had, they sold. Now, it doesn't, uh, I was reading some notes, it says it doesn't mean that it was their house. It means they might have owned houses and they sold one. And brought the money. They might have owned lands and they sold it and brought it to the Lord. Isn't that interesting? For the purpose. Fascinating. These are some rich folk. At this time, these are all the Jewish folks too. Amen? Because the, the Gentile church is still waiting to come in in its fullness. And so, uh, and, and, uh, so let's look at what Paul talks about this kind of giving. This kind of giving is fascinating to me. It just amazes me that this happened, and uh, it encourages me uh, that these people really wanted to build the kingdom of God, and they would do anything they could to make it happen. Amen? Mm -hmm. They had hearts of giving. And we're talking about money here. It doesn't mean mm -hmm. that that's the only thing. But all of this is discussing this part of money and ownership of things. Paul talks about this kind of giving in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 11 through 15. Let's read that. And all the scriptures we'll do will be the New Living Translation today. And you want to start that? Sure. Now, you should finish what you started. Let the eagerness you showed in the beginning be matched now by your giving. Give in proportion to what you have. Now, that's 2 Corinthians, which is this, is this, this time when he was writing this was after all of that had happened with Ananias and Sapphira. But he's reminding them, remember uh, uh, that great time when we brought what we need to don't forget that that we can keep continue to walk in that go ahead verse 12 whatever you give is acceptable if you give it eagerly and give according to what you have not what you don't have very interesting of course i don't mean your giving should make life easy for others and hard for yourselves i only mean that there should be some equality right now you have plenty and can help those who are in need Later, they will have plenty and can share with you when you need it. In this way, things will be equal. As the scriptures say, those who gathered a lot had nothing left over, and those who gathered only a little had enough. Mm -mm -mm. Now, most, most of the time when we talk about this scene, everybody wants to talk about the story of Ananias and Sapphira. But I want to talk about Barnabas. Just a little note about Barnabas, that he went and sold some land and brought the, brought the money as an example. And then all of a sudden this thing with Ananias and Sapphira. Let's not discuss Ananias and Sapphira, Ananias Ananias and Sapphira, and Sapphira. anymore. Let's talk about Barnabas. Who was he and how come he did this? Amen? Well, I want to let you know that his name appears 23 times in the book of Acts and his name five times in the letters of Paul. He, he was from Cyprus, his real name was Joseph. The disciples nicknamed him Barnabas, meaning the son of encouragement. Mm. He belonged to the tribe of Levi. Now listen carefully. The Levites were responsible for sanctuary services. Most likely, Barnabas was a teacher of the law in a synagogue in Cyprus. Now I read this other note that said, how could Levi have land if he was a, Le uh, you know, I mean, uh, how could... Uh, Barnabas have land if he was of the tribe of Levi and they're not supposed to own anything. Well, it said that in other towns they didn't run by those rules, so he could have had lands and things in other places. And he decided to sell one of them to bring to help. Uh, he sold a piece of land 
uh, and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet in Acts chapter 4. He worked to support himself while in ministry. That's in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. We won't look at it, but he took Paul to the apostles and recommended him, saying how Paul had seen the Lord and preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. Amen. Barnabas was a preacher. The reason for Barnabas' great success as a preacher was that he was a good man and like Acts chapter 11 says, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. Mm -hmm. This man, who we just heard in passing, right before the Ananias and Sapphira situation, just mentions that this guy Barnabas, son of encouragement, brought that piece of land and that's, that's the end of the story for him. We go into this long exhortation on Ananias and Sapphira. Now we find out that this man was full of the Holy Spirit and of faith he brought uh, the Apostle Paul to Antioch, where they worked together for a whole year teaching the people. That was in Acts 11. Um, and then he modeled Christ. In fact, Barnabas and Paul were so much like Christ that early, listen to this, Christ followers were called Christian for the first time in Antioch. Yeah, That's yeah. where they were preaching that they called these people Christians because the top two people were Paul and Barnabas. Isn't that fascinating? He was a leader, he was a mentor, and listen to this, he was mistakenly called Zeus by the people in Lystra, and they prepared to offer sacrifices to him and Paul. That's how revered this man Barnabas was. And he said, no, we're not gods, you know. <laughs> but, uh, so, the great part of this story here is not Ananias and Sapphira. That's right. It's Barnabas. As one example of what was happening throughout the saints and those who could according to what they had amen. or according to what they did not have somebody say amen. amen amen I call this the joy of giving to the Lord amen amen and uh, I want to encourage you encourage, our, encourage ourselves you don't have to go sell your house you don't have to sell lands I'm just talking about a lifetime of giving to the kingdom of God amen yes. second Corinthians we read second Corinthians 8 where Paul talked about giving. Then he talks about giving again in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, once you read this, verses 6 through 15. Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your heart how much to give, and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. Amazing. As the scriptures say, they, shall, they share freely and give generously to the poor. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. Wow. Yes, you will be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. And when we take your gifts to those who need them, they will thank God. Yeah. So two good things will result from this ministry of giving. The needs of the believers in Jerusalem will be met, and they will joyfully express their thanks to God. As a result of your ministry, they will give glory to God. For your generosity to them and to all believers will prove that you are obedient to the good news of Christ. And they will pray for you with deep affection because of the overflowing grace God has given to you. Thank God for this gift, too wonderful for words. He didn't say anything about selling houses or lands. It's just a heart of giving, a joy of what can we do to advance the kingdom of God? What can we do? And so it was all out of heartfelt uh, passion to help those in need and to further the kingdom of God. I want to show you, you know, so some of those people gave a lot of money um, in, the, in that time. Even if today, if somebody had sold a house and brought all the money to the, uh, the church, that would be a lot of money uh, or land, uh, anything like that. But, you know, some of us don't have extra land and some of us don't have extra houses. You know, yet. we can't sell our own house yet. yet. Yeah. But I want to give you an example that is pretty surprising. Let's say... You're a person who um, makes $40,000 a year, okay? That's pretty much a... Uh, I looked up median income of people and, and uh, or uh, a, what do you call the um, um, average income in Virginia, 
And there was figures all over the place. So I, you know, some of them were high, some were low. So I said, well, nobody can give me some real good facts, but let's just take somebody who makes $40,000 a year and they decide to tithe. All right, now you don't have to tithe in the New Testament. You get to tithe, amen? amen. It's a principle that God says the tithe is his and you can return it to him and, and there's promises that go with that. That's a choice if you want to do. It's a wonderful thing, wonderful way to honor and, mm -hmm. and to uh, help the kingdom of God, amen? Mm -hmm. And so let's say you gave $40,000 a year um, well, we, I could say that for me. Let's say, let's say I gave 40,000, I made $40,000, uh, last year and I tithed 10%. And let's just say that I gave, uh, I gave a little more than that of 2%. I'm just using that. So let's say I gave 12% total, right? And that would be $4,800 in that year. In that whole year, I gave $4,800. But don't forget, I'll be, I'll be a Christ, I've been a Christian 43 years. Let's just say I made an average of $40,000 a year for 40 years, 43 years or whatever, for 40 years. Guess what I gave over, over those years? $192,000. $192,000 that in my lifetime I could have given to the church if I made at least $40,000. Maybe I made more at one time and less at one time. Just, just, just a thought. So I'm not excluded from somebody who may give a lot of money to support the kingdom of God if I only made $40,000. Cut it in half, $20,000. That means you gave about $100,000 over your lifetime as a Christian uh, to the kingdom of God. Now just think about that. What joy. That's the joy of giving, amen? Mm -hmm. it's, it's no small thing to God. And... Uh, so I just want to encourage you that, you know, just think about what, what do you think, how many years have you been a Christian? If you've been tithing or giving or not tithing, just giving, giving, whatever you want to call it. Uh, what do you think all that funds that you've given away to the, uh, to the church, to help the church, uh, to help the poor, uh, things like that. Uh, just think of how much you've given. Now that brings me joy. That encourages me. I want to give more. I want to continue to give more. I don't have a piece of land to sell or something like that or a house, but maybe I will one day. But that's not important. I know that I have done what I can, and when I look at what it amounts to over time, it's pretty profound. It's very profound. And I'm sure your giving is pretty profound. If you've added it all up, yeah, you probably can't do it. But just think about it and be excited about it. Do you have something you want to say? Um, I think it was here in... The second Corinthians. Okay. Keep going. Yes. Nine. Yeah. Second Corinthians nine and eleven, where it says, "Yes, you will be enriched in every way, so that you can always be generous." Mm -hmm. And it's just so interesting because, like, seed time and harvest, we teach it all the time. We teach it to young kids, but yet somehow, us adults, we lose our way in thinking of seed time and harvest. And so, you know. You were just talking about the fact that, you know, hey, even if you're, you know, tithing your 10% and giving offering for 2%, you know, and how, how cheerful it is. What's even more cheerful is the fact that if you enjoy giving and you do it cheerfully from, from your heart, um, he is, he is um, sure to increase it so that you can give even more. And you can't outgive God. Nope. That's the that's best right. part. I that's guess right. that's that's the part that gets me really excited is that, you know, I remember that there were times that for me I wanted to give the tithe and it was hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, your your bills come out of your paycheck um right away or whatever may happen and it was hard. But I wanted it and I wanted it so badly. Um I just wanted to please him and honor him so badly that I I did it in faith. It was there and I just believe God that the bill would be paid later on, but it was there, I'm gonna do it. And every single time, every single time, somehow, and I can't even explain how, that month or the next month or whatever month, I had enough or more than enough. And I couldn't figure out how that happened. Mm -hmm. And so, but it just kept happening. And, um, you know, it's so funny. We always talk about, you know, the verse where it says, prove me in this, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, we always talk about that. But I, I sat there and I went, I want it so bad. And I want to give so much more that when it started to become 
easier to tithe it became so much more fun to give more because <laughs> yeah. and yet there was still enough there was an abundance of enough and it just didn't make logical sense you know you sit there and you try to figure out the details of how this could happen and how this works yeah. but um you know we go through we go through life every day not knowing how things work but we put faith in them yeah you know we put faith in the you know the chair we sit the, on the chair we sit on the electricity <laughs> the you know the plane that we ride in a big old hunk of metal you know we put faith in those things we don't know exactly how they work but we put our faith in those things but how much more to put our faith in the king of all kings so i just i just like that so much that it yeah. you know you you end, end up increasing even more to be able to give more so barnabas is this great example and we might think oh well i you know i like i wish i could be like barnabas but but if i look at my own life and i say well i've been tithing probably 40 years, 42 years, and, and my income's always been different, and uh, I've been given over and above a tithe, I don't know how much, but, and, and I, I really can't go back and, and figure it all out, but I'm thinking, you know, after 42, 43 years, that's, that's a lot of money. It's a whole lot of money, and I say to myself, yay, how much more can I give now? I'm still here, you know? And so it's a joy of giving. That's what I see happening here, in, in the book of Acts, and what Paul is teaching about uh, is not because of law. It's because we know that if we sow into the kingdom of God, it will bear eternal fruit. And sowing financially is one of the ways. And that's what this is talking about, sowing financially into the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. And so you have somebody who wanted to be stingy about it. And, uh, you know, well, you know, I'm not saying that God's... <laughs> going to take your life. But uh, it, it really woke up the church back then and say, hey, you know, this really, we need to get our heart right as to what we're doing. And so I'll say this. Um, there's nothing greater to support financially than the kingdom of God. Yes. Just in financial speaking. There is nothing greater to support financially than the kingdom of God. There are a lot of things we can support, a lot of things that are good and nice. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to put flowers in the, in the middle of the, uh, the, uh, the roadway there or something is great. It, 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 I, I'm not against that. And, uh, and if you have enough, that's fine if you want to do that. But it doesn't matter in the long run when we get to heaven. What matters is how much we've sown and produced fruit. Uh, and financially is one way. There's a lot of different ways to sow into the kingdom of God. And so, say this after me. The seed is the word. The seed is the word. And to finance its preaching. And to finance its preaching. Is to finance the kingdom of God. Is to finance the kingdom of God. In other words, anything we can do to get the word out there, to finance that is building the kingdom of God. Isn't that awesome? And uh, Jesus spoke of this in Luke 8, 11 through 15. Why don't you read that one? And this is uh, all in red print, Luke 8, 11 through 15. I like what you said just now about um, anything we can do to get the word of God out there. Yes. And that includes, you know, buying the, the man on the street his lunch. Uh, you know, that includes helping the, the single mom at the gas station. Yes. It's anything we can do to get the word of God out there. Yes, yes. Um, all right, so Luke, what is this? Luke, Luke 8, 8, 11 through 15. Okay. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is God's word. Somebody say amen. 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 The seeds that fell on the footpath represent those who hear the message only to have the devil come and take it away from their hearts and prevent them from believing and being saved. The seeds on the rocky soil represent those who hear the message and receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots... They believe for a while, then they fall away when they face temptation. The seeds that fell among the thorns represent those who hear the message, but all too quickly. The message is crowded out by the cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and so they never grow into maturity. And the seeds that fell on the good soil represent honest, good-hearted people who hear God's word, cling to it, and patiently produce a huge harvest. Isn't that awesome? And so we can take our finances and turn it into the kingdom of God through preaching and supporting the financing of the word going out. Amen? Amen. And uh, it works. So I just want to take a few minutes here and, and uh, talk about 
how the master's house is sowing the seed of God's word in several different ways. And I say this very carefully, so listen carefully. Um, John in chapter 3 verse 27 said this, No one can receive anything unless God gives it from heaven. We just read a scripture where they were sowing seed, and some people received it, and some people didn't. But they kept sowing seed. We can't control what people do with it when we get it out there. But we can keep sowing and sowing it every way we can. Amen? Amen. And so, but we also know that there's going to be people out there that are going to receive it fully, and it's going to make a big difference. Yeah. So financing the kingdom of God is, is worth it. Amen? Amen. And uh, we can't control uh, so many things. And so, Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 through 21. Now all the glory to God, who is able, through his mighty power, at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. Now I want to show you something, and uh, as a pastor of a church, and you might be listening online or someone here too, that um, you attend a different church and you have a pastor, and maybe that church produces a lot of things through certain people. For example, in this ministry, the Master's House, the Lord, through me, has written four published books. Amen? Yeah. Somebody say amen. But I want to say this really careful. Because that is a minist- what this ministry produced, my name might be on it, but the glory goes to God. Amen. That's right. Therefore, if you support this ministry to send that tool out there, I don't get the glory. <laughs> he gets the glory. That's right. But that's the purpose of it. Because without him, I had never... We could take my name off of it. It doesn't really matter. That's what I'm pointing out to you. In the, old, in, the, in the New Testament church, they supported the preaching of Paul or the preaching of Barnabas. And, and they, 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 made, they had a living off of that. Their needs were supplied by that. Well, did somebody get mad? Oh, well, you know, you, you know we're buying your food. Well, what they realized was is God is using this vessel to write and to teach. Why don't we support that? And help whatever whatever they, God instructs them to do. And they had no clue that the Apostle Paul was writing the New Testament. They had no clue uh, that the uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and James were writing the New Testament. They didn't know that. But they knew that if they supported that, the kingdom of God would go forth because of what, what is happening through those vessels. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No glory goes to those men. All glory goes to God. Mm-hmm. Somebody say amen. amen. So, in other words, if somebody supports this ministry and those books get to go out and get written and published, well, all the glory goes to him. Amen. Amen? Not to me. And so, uh, we have one book that's being translated in Arabic for distribution. Amen. All glory goes to God. Yep. This ministry is currently working on a 12-week Family Bible Revolution small group study for home and church use. This was an idea that you had. And, um, and so I'm really working on it. It's coming along. So we're going to have a meeting one day here and show, show how, the, how the small group works. And uh, it's a 12-week home Bible study on the family Bible revolution. And it was just a great idea. So that's coming. The Lord is doing things. Amen? He gets the glory. We have three more short books coming out on the family Bible revolution. Soon we're still working on it. And uh, I'm going to ask for your prayer. We have many teachings uh, that have been distributed overseas. We have weekly in-person and Facebook online services. We, uh, we archive all of our messages on YouTube for people to watch later. Uh, we have weekly family worship Zoom meeting. We have four websites. We have tmhnow.org, which tells you about the church and the ministry of the church. We have the familybiblerevolution.com, which is the vision of family, vision, and ministry. At that site is a product store with all products that we have, the books and the children's materials and things. I also have another, we, excuse me, also have another website called docinthehouse.org, which is a blog, and that's my blog. My name's on it, but I don't, it, all the glory goes to him, correct? Amen? And so um, that's there for people to go to to read some uh, uh, little longer messages and different things. Uh, we have CaptainCharismatic.com. You can go there and find all these things about children's ministry. Uh, we have children's educational music. We have children's curriculum for family use. Seven volumes, over 190 lessons. 
We also have a Choose You Netcast, our podcast. It's put on Podbean, uh, podbean.com. There's over 200, there's 200 messages on there currently. And, and just this week, they had yeah. over 1,000 downloads. Amen? Wow. Uh, and so, um, and, and, uh, uh, and then we also have a, uh, uh, an, oh, the podcast is also available on iCast and Spotify, two other places. All those messages are available on. Uh, we have an auto email Bible reading plan, the New Testament in a year, 260 chapters, five days a week that can be emailed to people once they sign up. We have another auto email daily devotion of over 400 devotions that people can sign up to receive. Now, my point is, this ministry, and that's the way I want to put it, is, uh, you know, even though the Lord might have used my hand to write these things, He gets the glory, but in this ministry, uh, we are sowing the Word of God in many areas, many ways, and many places. Now, here's what I ask. Please pray for the success and to be fruitful worldwide. Remember, we can't control what happens when we send it out. That's right. Right? Amen. We just offer it to God. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and, and just because these things might have my, my name on them, whatever, it's, it's him. And it's tools he's given us to use. So anybody that supports this church is supporting those things that are going out there all the time. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Isn't that wonderful? But I would like to see a whole lot more people interested in reading it, interested in hearing it, virally for these things to go around that happens on the Internet. But I can't control it. You can't control it. Uh, the old saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Amen? Um, so I want to ask to pray because we got all this it's all out there it's all helping we got new things coming lord we ask you to enlarge our borders and to use these materials and we pray people would receive them and 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 be blessed by them in jesus name so we thank you for giving them to us and we thank you that we have had the finances mm -hmm. to uh, publish these things and to put these things out there mm -hmm. and to pay the fees for these websites and do all of this. We just thank you for this. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Thank you. Lord. So, one way to support the ministry of the Master's House or any ministry who's sowing the Word of God is financially. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now, listen to this. Like Barnabas and the saints in the early church, they took great joy in supporting it financially so much that they sold land and houses to support the work of the New Testament church. God's not telling us to do that, uh, but um, you can if you led so. Unless he is, so, I was going to say, know, unless he is. You, you but... can. Our giving, he's given us to decide what we want to do. Amen. And so here's, here's what I want to say. We've been looking at some of the 12 apostles, but I want to look at what we just saw through the eyes of Barnabas. He was the example of this. And he was not one of the chosen apostles of the Lord. But look at the type of person he was. And so I want to pray, of course, for this ministry, to, uh, for its, all that we're doing, to bear more fruit. And I also want to pray for a worldwide revival of financial giving for the kingdom of God. Amen. Just like that in the early church, and like Paul was talking about, that people are just ready to say, oh, here's a place that's so in the word. Mm -hmm. Here, oh, here, here. And they don't dictate what happens with it. Here, you take it. And the leadership decides what it's going to do and what it's going to go. And pray for leadership that's going to do it with honor and integrity and, and according to uh, the goodness of God. Amen? Amen. And not abuse it. Yeah. Oh, let's pray. Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. You, I just got so excited, Lord, looking at this material and looking at Barnabas, this great man who, who just, this one little example but it also said all the believers were in on that. And they were of one heart. And they were giving what they had, not what they didn't have, to finance the kingdom of God. And I pray for a worldwide revival of financial kingdom, of financial giving for the kingdom of God, and the integrity and wisdom to use it with God's direction. Let's pray in the spirit a minute. And none of this is according to the law. It's according to grace and mercy that he's given us. Be encouraged for everything that you've given. 
in any ministry that you've supported over the years, any church you've attended that's sown the word of God, and any other ministries you may now support that are sowing the word of God. Be blessed. Let it be blessed. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for salvations, healings, deliverance, families saved, families healed, delivered. In Jesus' name, the finances of all the men and women of God that you've given to write, all the men and women that you've given to preach, all of those leaders who you've given these tools that support people can get behind and say, we're with you, let's do this. Here's What do we need? Let's go for this, let's do this. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, I want to thank you for all the giving in this church that's happened all of these years to provide that and make it all possible yes. and put all of that together. We give you all the glory. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 I hope this was a blessing to everybody. And I think at this point right now, I just want you to be encouraged. Amen. Be encouraged. If you think your giving is small, just think about, well, what have I done over the last 10 years? And then you can think, you know, it's, no, it's not small. It's not small. You haven't done anything small. God is using what you're giving. And, uh, and be encouraged. It's just wonderful. I want to have a heart like Barnabas. I want to have a heart like the saints had at that time and like Paul preached. Let's do this thing. What do we need and let's make it happen. Can somebody say amen? amen. And so uh, we just give you all the glory for that in Jesus' name. So you know what? Let's go ahead and receive the offering today. And I want to let you know that whatever you brought before the Lord and uh, you have in your hand to support this ministry with or whatever ministry that you're supporting that you're going to uh, that uh, we're going to call it blessed. And here in this church, uh, one of the things we do is we support um, uh, Lamb's Basket, which is a food ministry. And that's, uh, we, we collect food here and take it to them for the local neighborhood. That's another way you can give to the kingdom mm -hmm. of God, amen, to help the poor. Mm -hmm. So we do that, and if you want to bring uh, food supplies, uh, Betty makes it uh, and takes them over to the Lamb's Basket. We also have a missions control we do every month. This month is Samaritan's Purse which is uh, Franklin Graham, and they're all over the world. Guess what they're doing? Preaching the Word of God, helping the poor, restoring peace, people's families and houses and, and the things that they've lost over the years. They're in the Ukraine for the people that lost everything, and uh, they're helping them with food, and, and we're a part of that. And so I, I'm kind of glad that I don't have to go over to the Ukraine right now to make it happen. I can support groups like this. We can do it together and make a difference. And it may seem small, but boy, I tell you, when everybody that's going to support Samaritan's Purse this month gets together, I bet you they're going to be looking at a really nice chunk. And I pray that it's, it's it more than they need to, to work for what they do. Amen? Amen. And other ministries like Kenneth Copeland, they have these uh, rescue missions. And it's just amazing what they can do. And it takes, uh, it takes all of us to work on these things. Amen? So all gifts given today uh, or this month, this is the last uh, Sunday of the month, uh, in April will go directly to Samaritan's Purse. And even more so, we usually add to it a little bit, the church adds to. So uh, if you just mark your gift missions, and let us know. So how would people support this ministry? So if you're at home right now and you want to give via USPS, you can um, send your gift to the Master's House, P.O. Box 1568, Mechanicsville, Virginia, 23116. But you can also donate online which is um, tmhnow.org, and we use the Tidely platform. Um, and that's a really small picture. Let me try that again. There we go. <laughs> um, and so you can give on that, or you can, like, download Tidely um, on your device but, yeah. of any sort, and you can give there. Just make sure it's the Master's House in Mechanicsville. Um, there's a few Mechanicsville or a few master's houses around the world. So um, also, sorry, I've got, there we go. Okay. Um, and if you're here, you can donate in the black box at the back with the envelope. Just indicate yep. where it's going. There you go. Let's pray over our gifts. Thank you, Father. Yes. Yeah, we received that joy of giving. Yes. We received that anointing like the early church had. We're just so thankful. Oh, Lord, what else can we give? What else can we do? Oh, Jesus, thank you. The Lord would say, it's up to you. It's your choice. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for blessing. We re receive these gifts today, Lord. We bring them before your feet. Use it for salvations, healings, deliverance. 
build your kingdom on the earth while we're able to in Jesus name and everybody said amen, amen. are you excited yes. I'm excited I'm just excited and uh, and just think about what you've done in the past don't be dismayed it's awesome it's awesome what you've done in the past you add all that up it's like I did that yeah you did that amen and so how would they find out more about our church Okay, you can go to our website, tmhnow.org. Check us out there. You can also check out archive messages um, on that page um, at the messages tab. Or you can go to YouTube, which is TMHRVA. Um, you can check us out where you're at right now on Facebook at TMHNow. Um, and you can also check out the website, familybiblerevolution.com, to find out more about our vision. Check out the Get on the Right Track video and the six FBR snapshots. Yeah. But you can put it into practice on Tuesday nights. Tuesday nights. Yes. At 7 p.m. <laughs> Eastern Time, you can go to tmhnow.org or familybiblerevolution.com. Click on the calendar tab, and you can click on that Tuesday. And the link for all the credentials to sign in for our 40-minute family worship session is there. <laughs> Amen. What? What if they want to contact me? Well, then I would have to change my slide here. Oh. Yep. And I would have to, there we go, put Pastor Jim at tmhnow.org. You can email him right there. Yes, and we promise to respond. And yeah. so, anyway, for those that are online, I want to thank you for joining us. I call you blessed, healed, happy, healthy, and prosperous in Jesus' name. Please join us on Tuesday night and, and just find us next week, same time at 11 o'clock on Sunday right here on Facebook Live. We get, and we give God all the glory. Guess what? He gets all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody said amen. amen. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.